Welcome to this edition of Lakeside Physics. This video will give you an introduction to circular motion. Recall there are three ways an object can accelerate. By speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction. To talk about circular motion, we must start with some simple definitions. First, the circumference of a circle is the distance around a circle and is equal to 2 pi times the radius. The units we will use are meters. Period is, we will use a capital T for period, and it is the time to complete one cycle. We will measure it in seconds. Frequency is the cycles completed in a certain amount of time. It is the cycles per time, and we will use this specifically with seconds, so this will be 1 over seconds, which is also defined as a hertz. Notice that um, frequency is cycles per time second and period is the time to complete one cycle so they're actually the reciprocal of each other period is equal to 1 over frequency this is a note card equation now that we have defined circumference period and frequency let's consider the acceleration itself more specifically so imagine a ball of mass m is moving around a circle of radius r with a constant speed v what direction might the velocity vector point? Well, it will always point tangent to the circle and perpendicular to the radius. So at any given point on the circle, it will always be tangent to that particular point. What direction is the acceleration? Well, let's consider for a moment what would happen if we wanted to have an object speed up or slow down and see if we can relate that back to what happens if we want it to change direction. Recall that accelerations are always related to forces, so if I want something to speed up, I would need to push in the same direction that it's moving. If I wanted to something to slow down, I would need to push in the opposite direction that it is moving. So I can't push forward or backward on the object, so maybe I need to push sideways or toward the center of the circle. This is why we refer to it as a centri centripetal acceleration, because it is center-seeking. The magnitude of this central pointing acceleration would be equal to v squared over r. This is a note card equation. Now let's think about the force itself. By Newton's second law, accelerations are caused by a net force. Net force is equal to mass times acceleration, and we'll put a little subscript C to represent when we specifically have a centripetal force or a circular motion situation. We'll replace AC with our V squared over R, and we get another note card equation, that the net force centripetally is equal to MV squared over R. Centripetal force is the net force required for a mass m to travel with a constant speed v in a circle of radius r. Centripetal force, like centripetal acceleration, points towards the center of the circle. Let's consider a couple of important things about centripetal force. First, centripetal force is not another type of force. It is the name of the force or group of forces that act in the radial direction. Some possible centripetal forces include friction, pointed towards the center of the circle, tension, again we see it pointed towards the center of the circle, normal force, and finally gravity. Consideration 2. Sometimes the net force does not equal mv squared over r. What happens then? If the force, net force, is greater than mv squared over r, then the net force is greater than what is needed to keep it in a circle, and this will result in the object spiraling inward. If instead the net force is less than mv squared over r, then the net force is less than what is needed to keep it in a circle, and it will spiral outward. Our third consideration. Sometimes the object is going in a circle, but it is increasing or decreasing its speed. In this case, there will be a tangential acceleration in addition to the centripetal acceleration. The resulting net force will not point towards the center of the circle. We will not examine this case in any more detail. So, Mr. Klingler, you're talking about this centripetal force, but 
uh, when we're doing a lab in biology and we want to spin something around real fast, we use something called a centrifuge. That sounds like it would be using centrifugal force. But it's not called a centripede. So what's going on there? All right. Well, realize what's happening is, first of all, the centrifugal force, the outward pulling force that some people feel, um, that doesn't really exist. What's happening is, as things spin around, they want to continue their straight line motion according to Newton's first law. And so their inertia is trying to carry them in a straight line. However, the path they're taking is a curve. Therefore, from the perspective of the thing going in the circle, it seems like they're being pulled outwards. But really what they're doing is they're just trying to continue the straight line motion as the object curves inwards. Wow. Who knew? I will now do two example problems. The first is a simple situation where a ball is being swung in a horizontal circle at a constant speed. Find the values below. Let's begin by finding the speed. The net force is going to be equal to mv squared over r. We know that the centripetal force, whatever it's being caused by, is equal to 50 newtons. Our mass is 10 and our radius is 5. We can solve for the speed and we get that the speed is 5.0 meters per second. Let's now find the circumference. The circumference is 2 pi times the radius, so 2 pi times 5 gives us 31.4 meters. The period is found by taking the time divided by the cycle, so we want the total time to complete one cycle, and this is going to be equal to the displacement, or sorry, the distance traveled over the speed. The distance traveled in to complete one cycle is just the circumference, and then we divide by the speed and we get 6.28 seconds. To then find the frequency, we will just take the reciprocal of the period. So we get 0.159 hertz. In general, we can think about the steps for solving circular force problems. They are just like the steps that we've been using to solve other problems. First, you're going to write down what you're trying to find. You'll draw a free body diagram. Usually a side view will be helpful and mark the center of the circle relative to the free body diagram so that you can always keep in mind which way is towards the center of the circle. Write a net force equation. You'll want to keep the axes oriented such that one of the axis axes passes through the center of the, your circle. Let towards the center of the circle be positive. Now set net force equal to mv squared over r, or if it's another situation, the net force might be equal to zero or ma. Solve, substituting as necessary. And again, as always, if you get stuck, try a new direction or a new concept. For our second example, let's consider Caleb on a merry-go-round. What force is acting as a centripetal force on Caleb to keep him moving in a circle? Well, he's touching this bar, so the bar must be supplying an inward force to have him move in a circle. If he was not touching the bar, however, it would end up being a static frictional force between his feet and the base of the merry-go-round. All right, so now that we've thought about the force acting on Caleb, let's find the actual force of the bar that is applied to Caleb. Assume that this force is entirely horizontal and that there is no frictional force acting on him. Caleb has a mass of 18 kilograms and he was standing 1.0 meters from the center of the merry-go-round. At this point, I would like you to pause the video and try to solve this problem. Note that you will have to go back and get information from the video. What would be appropriate to find from the video? After you are done trying to solve this problem, you can go ahead and unpause the video and finish watching for a solution. All right, so if we think about the steps given, the first step is to write down what you are trying to find. So we are looking for the force acting on the, um, the force the bar applies to Caleb. You also might want to write down the things that you know. In this case, I gave you that the radius was one meter, the mass was 18 kilograms, and you should have found that the period, the time for one revolution, was about one was about four seconds. 
Step two is to draw a free body diagram. So we have the force of the bar pointing towards the center of the circle, normal force up, a weight down. Again, we can think of this as a side diagram. Now we want to write our net force equations. I'm going to write one both for the x direction and the y direction, even though for this particular problem we won't use the net force in the y direction. For the x direction, the net force is a centripetal force and it's the force of the bar. In the y direction, the sum of the forces is equal to zero and it's Fn minus Fw. Our step four is to set the net force equal to mv squared over r. So I get that the force of the bar is, should be equal to mv squared over r. Now I want to solve and substitute as necessary. And looking at this equation, I'm trying to solve for the force of the bar. I know the mass and I know the radius, but I currently don't know the speed at which Caleb was moving. So if we go back to thinking about our definition of speed, it is distance over time. And my distance, we consider the circumference of the circle, 2 pi r, over the period, the time it takes to complete one revolution. So 2 pi times 1 meter over the 4 seconds gives us 1.571 meters per second. We can now substitute back in for our force equation that the F bar is equal to mv squared over r. And we solve for this and get 44.4 newtons or rounded to one significant figure, we get 40 newtons. In three, we have three new equations for the note card. First is period is equal to one over frequency. Our acceleration, centripetal acceleration, is equal to v squared over r. And the sum of the forces pointed towards the center of a circle is equal to mv squared over r. Note again that the centripetal force is not a new force. It's just that when your sum of your forces point towards the center of a circle, you will have circular motion. Thanks. That's it. Again, as always, let us know if you have any questions.